Hi, my name is Lauren. I'm from America and I'm representing the Fulbright program and I'm teaching English here in Kwantan. I'd like to thank you for coming to visit us in Kwantan and giving this lecture. I would like to know what the Quran states about life after death. This is the question that what does the Quran have to speak about life after death? There are many verses of the Quran which speak about life after death. Many are similar to the Bible, some are not. But just to give you a brief before I answer this question, that as I mentioned in my talk, that science hasn't advanced so far to prove everything of the Quran. So according to science, science does not believe in life after death. First I'll touch on that topic, then come to your question. You may say that was Akir gave such a good talk about astronomy, biology, physiology, embryology. He believes in life after death. I told you very clearly that science hasn't advanced so far to say everything. I use a logical analysis that say suppose whatever Quran speaks about science, 80% approximately has been proved to be 100% correct. All the verses I quoted were those verses which have been proved by established science. But the remaining 20% what Quran speaks about science is ambiguous. Neither right, neither wrong. Today, no one can point out a single verse on the Quran which is against established science. But the balance 20% goes in the ambiguous thought. Neither right, neither wrong. So my logic says when 80% is 100% correct, and 20% is ambiguous, neither right, neither wrong. My logic says, inshallah, God willing, even that 20% will be correct. <laughs> Among these things which science hasn't yet known, hasn't established, one of them is life after death. Science hasn't yet reached so far or advanced to talk about life after death. Quran says in Surah Mulk, chapter number 67, verse number 2, Allazi khalaq al wal hayata. It's Allah who has created death and life to test which of his good deeds. In Islam, you come in this world once, and this life is a test for thereafter, and you die. Once you die, on the day of judgment, you are resurrected. Overall, this concept is the same as in the Bible. That you come in this world only once. And you die, you will be resurrected on the day of judgment. The minute details may differ as compared to the teaching of the church and the Bible. In the Quran, if we follow the guidelines of the Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the teachings of the last and final messenger Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, you pass in this test. So our test is whether you follow the guidelines of the Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the last and final messenger Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Therefore the Quran says, God has created death and life to test which of his good deeds. And there are, there are only 70 major do's and don'ts in Islam. Many people think, oh, thousands of things you cannot do and thousands of things you should do. Actually in Islam, there are only 70 major sins. With 70 do's and don'ts. There are minor sins also, which may be another few. First is, shit, associate partner with God. Associate partners with God is the biggest sin. Same in Christianity, same in Hinduism, in almost all the religion. The major sin is associate partners with God. So if you follow the commandments of Almighty God, in your next life, life after death, you have two options. Once, there, once you undergo the day of judgment, if you get more positive points, you will go to heaven. If you get negative points, you will go to hell. So this life is a test for thereafter. Similar thing is mentioned in the Hindu scriptures, similar mentioned in the Christian scriptures. But what happens, the difference is, in the Quran you have to follow the scripture. Follow the Quran. Even in the Bible you have to follow the scripture. But the church says something else. The church tells his followers that you believe Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, died for your sins and you will go to paradise. This is nowhere mentioned in the Bible. Nowhere. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, it's mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5, verse number 7 to 20. Think not that I have come to destroy the law of the prophets. I have come not to destroy but to fulfill. And until the heaven and the earth pass away, not one jot or tittle shall pass away from the law until all be fulfilled. 
And whosoever shall break one of the least commandments shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. And whosoever shall fulfill them and teach the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, in no way shall you enter the kingdom of heaven. So Jesus Christ these people and says that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, that means all the Jewish law, what has been mentioned in the Old Testament, until you fulfill all, even if you break one, you shall not go to Jannah, you shall not go to paradise. So according to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, if you read the Bible, you have to follow the law and the commandment. But when you read, when you listen to the church, the church says, believe Jesus Christ died for your sin and you should go to paradise. Which is nowhere mentioned. There is not a single unequivocal statement where Jesus Christ, peace be upon himself, says that I am God of Isaac worship. Nowhere. So when you go compare to study, you should rather study the scripture. Even Hinduism talks about do's and don'ts. Hinduism says that worship is wrong. You have to worship the true one God. And it's clearly mentioned in the Quran in Surah Dariya, chapter 50 and verse 56. Wama khalaktu jinna wal insa illa liyabdu. That we have created the jinn and the men not but to worship him. That means the human beings have been created by Almighty God to worship him. Worship means obeying his commandments. Besides praying to him, etc., obeying his commandment. So if you obey the commandment of your creator in the next life, you will go to paradise. If you don't, and if Allah wants to forgive you, yet you can go to paradise. If you do small sin, Allah can forgive you. Now coming to the question, because it's a Quran and modern science, how can I prove scientifically that the life after death? Or logically? Science hasn't advanced so far to prove life after death, as I told you earlier. But there is a logical way, not a scientific logical way. Sister, I'd like to ask you that is robbing good or bad? Uh, robbing is good or bad? It depends. Yes. Is robbing good or bad for the human beings? Uh, if you need to rob to feed your family, then it's good for you. <laughs> <laughs> so if you rob to feed your family, good for you. Would you prefer robbing or working? Oh no. Because that means you rob, sister. No, you Do should. Do you have work. a family? No. No, a family. No, you have father, mother. Yes. They are part of your family, no? Yes. So to feed your father, mother, do you rob? No. You just told in your introduction you teach English, and I was happy about it. Now you are saying that to rob is good. <laughs> it's contradicting. Which is better to work as an English teacher better or to rob is better? No, it's good to work. Correct. Whether an English teacher or Malay teacher or whatever it is, but to work is better or rob is better? To work. It's Suppose good. someone robs you. Yeah, even to feed the funeral, you say no, you tell that you work hard. Because even to rob you have to work. Even to rob you have to strive. So it's better to strive and do a work which is honest rather than rob. So generally if the robbing is good or bad? Bad. Bad. <laughs> Raping a woman is good or bad? Raping a woman is good or bad? Bad. Bad, correct. Does anyone say it is good here? <laughs> oh. Now sister, now I, suppose I am, I am an atheist, hypothetically, hypothetically. I don't believe in life after death. I don't believe. And I am asking you now, give me one logical reason. Why robbing is bad? Or why raping is bad? And I will stop it. You know, I am hypothetically, I'm a mafia. <laughs> I'm mafia, I'm the biggest smuggler in the world. I'm very powerful. But I'm logical and scientific. I don't believe in God, I don't believe in life after death. I'm asking a simple question. Prove to me, only give me one logical reason why robbing is bad, I will stop robbing. Because it, it's bad, it causes negative, it's a negative action. For you, for me, it's not negative, positive. I rob, I get money, I can go and see movie, I can go to a five-star hotel, I can have mutton biryani, chicken biryani, you know, it's good. <laughs> I ask you, give me one logical reason why robbing is bad, I stop robbing. I'm a logical person, I'm a scientific person. Give me one scientific reason or logical reason why robbing is bad, I stop robbing. Does anyone want to help her? Can you give me one good reason? Only one. Sin. Fine. It's a sin for you, so you don't rob. For me, it's not a sin. As I told you, you prove to 
to me, in my opinion, is bad, I will stop robbing. Yes, sister. You cause pain on the other party. Fine. You rob. Very good. When I drop, it causes pain to other party. I agree with you. But why it is bad for me? It's bad for him. I ask him to tell me why robbing is bad for me, not for him. I agree with you on this pain. I'm a logical person. I'm a scientific person. I'm the biggest mafia in the world. And I think robbing is good. Yes, sister? Karma. If you rob, somebody will rob you. Sister saying, if you rob, it's okay for others to rob, somebody will rob you. Very good. For other people, it's correct. But me, sister, told I'm mafia. I've got 100 bodyguards. You know, behind the stage, behind the stage, they're AK-57, all behind, you cannot see them. I've got 100 bodyguards. For a normal man to rob is good because somebody may rob them. But I'm a big mafia. I've got the police in my pocket. Somebody will tell me, police will catch me. Police can't catch me. I've got police in my pocket. I've got, you know, they are my payrolls. All the police are my payroll. I told you, proof to me why robbing is bad for me. I will stop robbing. I am logical and scientific. <coughs> Anyone wants to help the sister? Um, sir, maybe as a mafia, um, you rob people and people will hate you. And then people want to hurt you and your family. So that's why you have so many bodyguards. Now, if you don't rob, you won't have so many bodyguards. You will live in peace. Sister says that if I rob, people will hit me. If they hit me, it doesn't hurt me. It doesn't hurt me. See, if someone hates me, they cannot hit me. Why? Because I want bodyguard. They cannot hurt me because I want bodyguard. They can hit me. If someone hates me, it doesn't make a difference to me at all. If it makes a difference for you, you don't know. See, I told you I'm logical, I'm scientific. You have to prove to me why it is bad for me, not for you. Anyone? Yes, brother. Last chance. <laughs> Sorry? I can't hear you. She will have a... She has a gun in the purse and she will shoot you. She will have a gun in the purse and shoot you. Shoot you. <laughs> Didn't I tell you I've got 100 bodyguards? All these things don't work with me. <laughs> He thinks I'm a small robber. I'm a big mafia. These <laughs> small tigers don't hurt me. Anyway now, I'll just, we'll just reverse the exercise. You are that mafia and I'm a Muslim now. Fine? Right? You are that mafia, I'm the Muslim. Now, you say robbing is good, I'm saying robbing is bad. If I tell you, but don't rob, somebody will hurt you. You said no one can hurt me, I've got bodyguards. I said, people will get hurt. I said, doesn't make a difference to me. And police will catch you. Police is in your pocket. Logically, anything you say, you cannot prove logically robbing is bad unless. First, I will prove to you about the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Existence of one God. And you can refer to my video because it's Quran and modern science. Now, even if I prove the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Almighty God, you will say, what kind of justice is this? Yet there are so many people robbing and living, living so well. What we have to realize that even if that person is a mafia, no one can hurt him, no one can cause trouble to him. If I ask a question to him that whatever thing is being done, what he's doing, shouldn't there be justice in this world? The normal thing is that shouldn't there be justice? Now, when we see around us, there are many criminal acts going on. And that criminal many a time leads a very peaceful life. Like that mafia who may be the head, he may be living in the European country or Italy or whatever it is. He, he does all sorts of evil, he may be robbing, he may be raping, he may be doing wrong things, and yet he dies a peaceful death. Now the point to be noted is, there has to be justice if there is God. And we know many people doing justice in this world and no justice is done. So besides God, only one God is not sufficient. If there is one God and creator, there has to be a life after death. The only way I can prove to the person not to rob is fine, you can go scot free here. No one will hurt you because you are a mafia. But what about Akhira? This life that you're leading is only a temporary life on an average 60 years old. You may die at the age of 20, 30, 40, 60, 80, 90, but average is meaning live for about 60 years. In this world you may enjoy. The next world is still eternity. In the next world, you will go to Jahannam, you will go to hell. 
the only way the only way you can prove to a person that robbing is bad is about the existence of life after death without life after death with all your logic with all your science with all your technology you can never prove robbing is bad you can never prove raping is bad i am asking you a question if you catch hitler today you know hitler has incinerated 6 million jews 6 million jews correct suppose you happen to catch hitler today what punishment can you give him what punishment kill him one what about the balance 5 million 999999 people he killed is it justice yes or no no in the akhira allah says in the quran in surah nisa chapter 456 as often as the skin is roasted allah will give you fresh skin so that you just feel the pain if almighty god wants to incinerate hitler 6 million times he can do it he can do it 12 million times or so we can't do it so only way he can get his punishment is in life after that so the only way you can prove that robbing is bad cheating is bad raping is bad is proving to the human being about life after that so besides believing in one god besides believing in the last and final messenger prophet muhammad you have to believe in life after that without life after that all these moral values that we talk about doesn't carry weight unless you prove that there is something like life after that you give charity fine you feel happy because maybe in the life after that you will go to heaven the only way you help as a human being you get that inner peace and it is related with the belief in one god and belief in the life after death hope that's the question